Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're getting personal. So I made a video a few years ago now about my birth control. I was on the pill at the time. I have recently changed my birth control. So I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's make another one of these. I feel like while there are videos about this on YouTube, I think there could always be more because whenever somebody gets birth control, it is a very subjective experience. What you get, why you get it, what your experience with it is, which is why I made the video about my experience on the pill. So I was like, hmm, I got something else now. Let's make a video on that. So I got the corporate in two and a half weeks ago now um, at the point of filming. All I can say is that it has been an experience. I mean, hopefully in the end it'll be an overwhelmingly positive experience, but at the moment I'm still a bit like, <laughs> so this video is kind of in like four sections. I'll give you a little quick overview of what the coil is versus maybe other options, why I changed my birth control, the process um, of getting the coil, and then sort of what the last couple weeks now have been for me like having it, you know, in me. So without any further ado, birth control conversation time. Woo. So the coil is essentially a little T-shaped thing that goes in your uterus. You can either get an IUD, which is an interuri, interuri, u, hmm, inter u, uterine, ah, I can't say it, intrauterus something system, interurine that device. So an IUD or an IUS. An IUD is the copper coil, an IUS is what I got in, so that is with hormones. So they essentially work in very similar ways. I think the main difference between the copper one and the hormonal one is that the copper one you can have in for a lot longer, but then it also has no effects on your cycle. Whereas the hormonal one does, it releases progesterone. So over time it will actually thin the lining of your uterus, meaning that you will eventually have lighter and lighter periods, and even in some cases your period will just stop completely. Which is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> that would be great. Which means that the IUS is actually one that you can use to control your periods. So for me that was like, haha, win-win. So that is the one that I have gone for. And as I said, they can be in for a long time. I think with the two hormonal ones, which in the UK and the NHS that you can get are JDS and the one that I've got, which is the Marina, so you can have them in for three and five years respectively. I know with the couple ones, like I said, you can have them longer, I think even like 10 years, which is just, <laughs> that's a long, <laughs> that's a long time. As ever with these kind of videos, I'm not an expert in any kind of way. So I will link lots and lots and lots and lots further reading. All of the further reading your little hearts can desire, all in one place, they're all in the description. So that you have all the resources you could possibly need, but I know it's always nice to have a personal one, which is where I come in. So a bit more about my thought process, why I changed my birth control. So I was on the pill since I was about 15. My initial reasons for going on the pill were to control my period and just make it calm down, which is why for me the IUS was essentially the only thing that I wanted, I just need. I need a bit of control in my life when it comes to that. I had a very good relationship with pill. I was on Microgynon 30, which is a combined pill. So I was on that for a very long time. And while I was, you know, at school and at uni, I had a rhythm, I had a schedule. So for me, remembering to take the pill every single day, that was fine. It was easy. It worked well for me just because, you know, out of habit. But now that I'm older and just Everything recently has been all over the place. I don't have the same schedule that I did. You'd be surprised how dependent you can become on just having a, a rhythm week to week, day to day. So for me, it started becoming more of an issue to have to remember to take it, which is just one of those things that you also just do not want to have to then be like stressed because you forgot to take it and then you don't want to like take two and you forgot one to then try and like almost play catch up with your own body and your own hormones and that's just not good and that was happening too much to me and I was just like this is just becoming very irresponsible and I also did have a pregnancy scare which actually ended up just being because I was so stressed that I didn't have a period which was around you know the time my dissertation and exams would you hmm, funny funny coincidence there you know great timing but essentially that scare was just too much for me and I'm just like no I just essentially have noped out the situation I'm like I can't do this anymore it's not good for my body it's not good for my mental health as well so I was just like look we need a more permanent solution that doesn't rely on me remembering things. Which is then why I looked at the coil and I also did look at the implant as well. The reason that I haven't gone for the implant, even though I've had friends who've got it done and they love it and they rave about it and they want to convert everyone onto getting the implant, I've also got friends who have had the coil put in and they also have said that it's great. So, you know, it's just so useful. Again, why I'm making a video like this. It's so useful to have that word of mouth and to have people's experiences to know you know, how they felt about it, was it good, was it bad, you know, all of, all of, the, all of the details that really you kind of, you only really want to hear from friends, um, or strangers on the internet. So I looked at the implant and the coil, and the reason I've gone for the coil and not the implant was that I just didn't want more hormones in my body. The one thing that was always bothered me about the pill is the fact that you take it orally, it has to go around 
your entire body before it gets to where it needs to be. And the other thing is that now being older, I'm now 21, I went on the pill when I was 15. I just don't want that really in my system in the same way anymore. Um, and what's always essentially actually freaked me out, I think is the right word, is that when you come off the pill, if you've been on it for a very long time, it can take sometimes a year for your fertility to get back to normal. And getting like older, that has like started to occur to me more and more, which is then one of the reasons the coil appealed to me so much is that, you know, it goes in and when it comes out, your fertility is straight back to normal. If this is in five years, so this will come out when I'm 26, almost 27. So I just, I don't know what my life is going to look like or feel like at that point. So I just like the idea that it can come out and like, back to normal. And the other thing being that you can have the coil taken out at any time and that you can also have it put in at any time. So the three main things of why I chose the coil over anything else was less hormones. The fact that your fertility snaps right back and the fact that there are still hormones so there is you know period control period management after coming off the pill between having this put in i had one normal period so one that would have been just completely without anything and it was it they're short but they are excruciatingly painful i was just like i can't nope i can't do this no that was just not not happening at all so i'm very very happy this is like going to change now. Because the coil is going to interfere with your menstrual cycle, the one thing I would recommend if you're considering getting it done, maybe even like in a month or even two months, if you don't already, would be to start tracking your period. That's something I've had to start doing. The one thing with the pill that I am now going to miss is the fact that I always knew my period was going to come. I could always time it. I was even recommended to take packs back to back, which meant that I had like six periods a year, which was great. So that's one thing I am going to miss, but just sort of the trade-off just was not worth it for me anymore. It was really just sort of weighing everything up and going like, okay, these are now my priorities. This is why I'm gonna lean down on this side rather than the other options that I have. So then with having it put in, it means that now I just have to, I just have to track everything. On my phone, there is a health app, which is just built in. So I just use the one that's on there. I know there are a bunch of other apps that people like to use. If you have any recommendations, I would actually appreciate to hear them down below. Just so I always know when it's supposed to be happening, because now that is the one thing I feel like I have lost a little bit of control over, which is fine, but it was obviously the, one of the major perks of being on the pills. I'm like, okay, I need to just... <laughs> and then also, you know, things cross that mine, like, chills out over the next few months. I'll probably have to do a year update, who knows? After weighing everything up, I decided to have the Marina Coil, which is progesterone only, and it is in for five years. So, the process. Of course, I started off with researching Coil just a little bit, and watching videos, reading about it. So clearly you guys are making a good start at that. And I also spoke to some friends who had had it put in, just to you know their experiences and also the wonderful thing of being able to ask questions. I guess with YouTube again, the comments mean that you can. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Please help each other if you guys can. And I do moderate my comments as well. So just so you know. So for those of you guys here in London, I got mine through 5016 Street, which is a specialist NHS sexual health clinic. This came recommended by friends actually via Via. And if you guys are in London, I cannot actually re recommend them highly enough. So I rang them and made my appointment. I actually had to wait a month for my appointment but it definitely was worth it. In the time before your appointment, read as much as you can, everything. Put your mind at ease more than anything. And then two weeks before your appointment, you will have to get an SDI checkup. And with Dean Street, they have a Dean Street Express, which they have, so I went to that, got myself checked out, so that was good. Also, just as a side note, you can order now home testing kits and stuff, so you have never got an excuse not to get yourself tested, especially in between partners. Like, this is always your responsibility to look after yourself, especially because when it comes to sexual health, you do implicate other people with your actions, so be good, get yourself tested. Look after yourselves and others. So yeah, I got that done. I did actually ask one of my friends to go with me when I went to get the coil put in because people have said that they can feel very like dizzy and like headed afterwards. I wanted to make sure that I was okay because honestly, better safe than sorry. I would also recommend with your appointment that you do not, you know, afterwards drive yourself home or get public transport home. Get a friend to drive you home or get a taxi. I just got an Uber back to mine. Just to make sure that you're like looked after, you know? So I went to my appointment. Vanessa was very nice. The doctor was very nice, um, it was a guy, which did actually initially catch me a little bit off guard. So my brain kind of went, oh, it's a man. And then the other part of my brain instantly went, this man looks a vagina for a living. And then I calmed down and I was like, all right, okay. So they chat you through, again, your options, make sure that you know what the risks are. The risks are that you might get a perforated uterus, which means that when it goes in, it sort of goes, well, yeah, perforates your uterus and can then go like walk about in your body, which is kind of like, <laughs> Okay, you can just get lost inside of you, which is kind of like, okay. Or that it can actually just come out again. So that's why after every period you are meant to like check that it is up still in there. There are some strings that you can feel. I have to say, it requires a certain level of flexibility and acrobatics to actually be able to like, 
because you have to move your hand in such a weird position to try and be like, where is this? Because you need to go to your cervix. So it's kind of like a little bit of acrobatics required. I would recommend doing this in the shower. But yeah, went in, had my appointment. If you guys are a little bit nervous, I would recommend wearing a skirt. Do you have to take your skirt off? I was like, haha. Genius. That made me feel a lot more comfortable. And at Dean Street, they put on Bridget Jones. Vanessa was explaining to me that like someone had put Shrek on a few days previously and she was like horrified by it. But personally, I would have found that incredibly entertaining. But it just means that like, even though they talk you through all of the steps of what's going on during your appointment, I was just watching Bridget Jones's the second one, The Edge of Reason. Um, and it's like the bit where they go skiing. So I was just kind of like, oh. And it's also then the bit where she needs to go and get a pregnancy test. So I was like, sort of looking at it like, hmm. Yeah, we're gonna avoid this situation right now. So yeah, the steps were being explained to me, but I wasn't really paying attention. So I'll leave you lots of resources down below so you do know what's going on if you would like to. The only thing that I am not totally pleased about is the fact that the nurse was not very helpful when she was like, she wanted me to like breathe. And I was just getting very confused about what she actually wanted me to do. So honestly, I think the breathing made me feel dizzy more than anything. And I don't know if she was trying to distract me so that it wouldn't hurt as much, but it just confused me. And the one thing that I've never had before is that my face went really hot and then like tingly. I told my friend this and then she asked me like, you know, have you ever fainted? And I'm like, well, no. So I don't know if that was something, I don't know if that's something that happens to you before you faint, but that was just not a pleasant experience, mainly because that's, you know, that was new. But essentially there are two bits that actually hurt. They have to measure the length of your uterus to make sure that you can actually get the Marina coil, because I think it's a bit bigger than the J, the 3A1, the J Des coil. I was good to go, but that, that did hurt. And then when they put it in, I'm not gonna lie, and I'm not gonna beat around the bush, it hurts. It really hurts. But my mind, as it was going in, I was like, okay, yes, ow, this hurts, but what the fuck just like pushing a child out of your, like, what? So, like, what the fuck, fuck does childbirth then fucking feel like? Um, so that's what my brain was thinking as this was going in. So I was like, you know what? I can make my peace with it because this is definitely not gonna happen to me for the next five years. So I feel like it's a fair trade-off, which also I'm like, please, I've got the five-year one, not the three-year one, because then I don't need to go through it all over again. You know, I'm like, okay. It kind of just feels like the most intense menstrual cramp you've ever had for like a couple seconds and then, then we're good to go. So honestly, yeah, it hurts but it is worth it. In terms of trade-off, it is definitely worth it. I wouldn't worry too much about it. So all in all, it was a fine experience. I don't want to be like, oh, that's a great experience because obviously it's not, but like for what it is, it was totally fine. Um, and I'm very happy that I had it done. Then they also give, they hand you like the biggest pad you have ever seen in your life. And I'm not somebody who like at all likes pads. So I was just kind of looking at like, oh my God, what? They asked you for the next like two days not to use a tampon or a cup or anything, so really enjoyed this like enormous thick pan. I was like, oh, this, this is great. Then we just asked you to sit in the waiting room for like 10 minutes to like see how you're doing in terms of like your level of pain or whatever. Take painkillers before you go so that they have already kicked in by the time that you're there. I highly, highly, highly recommend that. Definitely, definitely, do not forget to do that, please. I it's like for your own sake, don't forget to do that. So I stay in the waiting room for a few more minutes. Then I did end up getting an Uber home and I spent the rest of the day I was gonna film. <laughs> um, so I spent the rest of the day in bed. I had some Ben and Jerry's in the freezer, so I was like, yes. Um, and that's the day that I watched four rom-coms. I had to watch Bridget Jones, okay? I just had to knew what happened next. So make sure that you have a time where it's like time that's blocked off so that you can just like look after yourself and not move too much. And hopefully have food made for you and like snacks. But yeah, in terms of getting it done, that was like a completely fine experience. Like, I don't particularly see there to be many negatives, but if you're not someone who is necessarily comfortable with like, someone being up down there, like, you know, that's a choice that you have to make for you, what feels right for you. And so, what is the, what I've been wanting to use is aftermath, but this is just not right, is I can't be like, oh, the aftermath of having the coil fitted, no. So the last couple of weeks, while the coil does work instantly, they did say, you know, use condoms for the next week. To what I had quite a lot for the next week was spotting, so like, a lot. So I was like, that, this is, this is really fun, because then one day I would have nothing, I'd be like, oh, cool, it's over, and the next day it was like, hi, I was like, oh my god. So just unpredictable spotting, which was just not pleasant. Still hasn't completely stopped, so that is also continues to not be pleasant. Apparently this is completely normal, but I'm just like, I just, just want it to stop. I have spent two weeks just watching so much come out of me. I'm just like, I am over this. Because if this is going on for an entire month and then I get my period, I'm like, oh my God, it's just, I haven't had a fucking break. Which is why again, I'm telling myself it's fine in terms of trade-off because this is in for five years. And hopefully, 
it's just gonna stop altogether. So that is one thing that I haven't had yet is a proper period while on the coil. But with the one that I got, you do get sort of a little information book. I've been reading this quite a few times and I've just really enjoying looking at all of the side effects, which you really only start to think about afterwards. Well, I did anyway. So the very common ones, for example, like more than one in 10 is spotting and then light or absent periods, which would be fantastic. And then the more common ones, less than one in 10, I'm just gonna read this out to you because this is always fun, is ovarian cysts, painful periods, weight gain, depression, nervousness, headaches, migraines, abdominal, pelvic back pain, nausea, acne, increased growth of hair on the face and body, reduced sex drive, increased vaginal discharge, inflammation of the vulva and vagina, tender, painful breasts, and the marina coming up by itself. So of those that I have had, I have just had acne. And also like just continued sort of period pains. I was almost doubled over earlier, which is really fun. I feel like I was planning this video and I feel like the call knew I was talking about it. So it was just like, <sighs> I think this is maybe a little bit to do with like the more movement I do, the more that it sort of acts up. But I have had a lot of cramping the last two weeks. Some days I'll be completely fine. Some days I might just do like one cramp where I'm like, oh dear God. So there's not any kind of pattern with it. It's just like once in a while, it'll just be like, I'm still here. I'm like, oh my god, oh. Which is why I have checked, like, is it still in the right place a few times? But yeah, it's still fine. It's just like, I'm very aware that it is in me. <laughs> so I have broken out here, here, and then on my jawline. I had this one enormous zit, and it just like disrupted the entire shape of my jawline. I saw it in the mirror and I was like, what the fuck? I've always had like a little bit of acne. One thing that then I enjoyed learning is that like, you know, the combined pill does help control. <laughs> acne so I was like oh my god am I gonna just become as spotty as I should have been had I like not been on the pill oh my god so that kind of like threw me for a moment and I had like a little mental breakdown um and I was like staring at myself going like oh my god I'm so ugly that was really fun doesn't say that mental breakdown is you know one of the um the side effects oh <laughs> depression nervousness it just means I'm being more on it again with like all of my spot stuff you know with face masks I have a really nice like chemical peel on from the ordinary um, which I'll link to you guys down below because it's just fantastic and then also I picked up another like pixie toner you know like the glow tonic that's got a little salicylic acid in it so it's just like I'm just like just chemically peeling my face off and now apparently my neck so that was very unexpected and very unwelcome I was just like my Fuck. So those have really been the only two things that have been bothering me is just the continuous fucking spotting and the acne. So yeah, spots all around. Great. But I think in the grand scheme, again, those things are relatively minor. Another issue that I know some people do end up having is like feeling it during sex. I haven't, so that's been fine. But I know that can be an issue for some people. But again, like if you have any severe pain or any problem, just always contact your GP and just, if there's anything that you just feel wrong about, just talk to your GP, just talk to your doctor, they can help you sort it out and you should be okay. And if there's a problem, you can always have it taken out. Or it might just want to slip out of you on its own, apparently, which still slightly terrifies me. Or uh, go walk about in your abdomen if your uterus has been perforated, which again, slightly terrifying. Um, but very, very uncommon, so. We are going with the odds on this one. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say about my experience. If you guys have any questions, you can just drop them down below, help each other, like I said. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can just drop me a DM. I probably won't be able to respond to everyone, but I will do my very best to. But yeah, like, subscribe, and all jazz, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Uterus, that. Why can't I say these words? I U S, which means that the I U yet I is. Why is it so difficult for me? Like Sarah. But yeah, that's. But yeah, that's.